What's going on guys? Today, I'm here to bring you all a stabilizer video. I'm gonna be putting these three stabilizers head to head. I have the Glycam HD2000, the DJI Ronin M, and also the Zion Crane. I'm gonna be putting these through three different types of movement tests. One that's very slow, one that's in the medium speed pace of things. Typically, uh, the movement that you'll probably be be doing if you're doing music videos like me and also a very fast movement which is something that you do typically do with music videos as well I'm just gonna wrap up this video at the end by talking about which stabilizer I personally like the best give you all some insight on what stabilizer might work best for you depending on what type of field or film you're in I'm also just gonna talk about the strengths and weaknesses of each stabilizer so let's just get straight into it Alright, so I'm finally back at home in the editing stage of putting this video together. And one thing that is undeniably evident from this entire versus video is that I'm all for using a glide cam. <laughs> but I just wanted to throw out a few different instances and kind of explain why this was potentially the problem for me. Because I was an avid glide cam user at one point in time, very experienced with it. And I think the real reason that the footage here is not that great is one of the negatives of the glide cam. And I'm gonna personally touch on the negatives of every single one of these systems here in a second, but I just wanted to briefly throw this out there because I know the glide cam users are gonna post it in the comments, but I don't think I had enough weight on this system. And what I mean by that is uh, I was using the Sony A6300, of course, but I was using a 10 to 18 millimeter uh, combo and I was able to balance it out really well, as you can see right here in this drop test. But I think the fact that it didn't have as much weight on it as I should have, I wanted to use the 18 and 35 Sigma combo for this entire test, but I wanted to keep it as even as possible throughout the, all the different systems. And the crane just simply will not support the 18 and 35. And I guess that's a problem with that one as well. I used the 10 to 18 millimeters uh, combo. And as I said, I was able to balance it out, but I think the fact that I didn't have as much weight on the top uh, when I was going to do my directional turns from the glide cam, I think they were just abrupt and like all of a sudden, and I don't know, it just had like a very all over the place look. So that right there, as well as the wind that was going on outside kind of contributed to uh, the endless sway that you were seeing in that glide cam footage. So don't even really take that into consideration if you're thinking about getting a glide cam, but I'm still gonna briefly touch on the positives and negatives about these systems and give my input on them. And I'm gonna talk about which one is particularly my personal favorite out of these uh, in the field of work that I do. And I'm gonna give you all a few suggestions on what would potentially be a good system for you. So let's just get into the negatives of the glide cam first. As I said, the weight issue on it is kind of sort of an issue. If you have a smaller system like a Sony a6300 and you're using a kit lens, you're not gonna to wanna to even think about using a glide cam just because it's gonna to be too light for you to balance out. And the glide cam is one of those systems that is gonna perform a bit better when you have just a little bit of weight on it. So as I said, if you have a smaller system, Sony a6300 kit lens, 
or even some of these other smaller lenses that are native with the Sony, you're not gonna wanna get a glide cam. Another negative about the glide cam that I think personally is kind of a gift and a curse, but sometimes you just want like a level horizon when you're filming. You just want those straight shots and you want the camera to stay as straight on the horizon as possible. When you're using a glide cam, it's almost impossible to get that. When you're using a glide cam, you're gonna get constant sway on your horizon. It provides a really realistic, smooth, fluid motion, but sometimes, as I said, you just wanna stay horizon. And with the glide cam, it's just kinda of sorta of impossible to achieve most of the time. Like the slightest gust of wind is gonna send this thing flowing a little bit, depending on how much weight you do have on it. So just keep that in mind. Um, as I said, it's not a big negative. I like it. A little bit because it provides a very fluid motion and with the gimbal sometimes when you're trying to keep a straight horizon you can get almost a mechanical look so I don't know I guess that's gonna depend on personal preference but a few positives of the glide cam system is the form factor the glide cam is very lightweight so it's not like a very heavy system I would say it's pretty much lighter than a Ronin I think the Ronin is gonna be the heaviest out of all of these things but it's lightweight. You also don't need a battery for the glide cam so you don't have to wonder if you charged it the night before you can just get up get out there and shoot. The glide cam is also very rugged. With these gimbals like the Crane and the Ronin, they, they have batteries, they're electronic. You're gonna kinda sorta wanna be delicate with these systems and you really don't have to do that with the glide cam. You can just toss it in the trunk, get on the go, get the going, get the shooting and you know, capturing what you need to capture. Another negative about the glide cam that I forgot to mention is if you have ever used the glide cam or if you are an avid glide cam user, you'll know and you can vouch for me on this, that the glide cam does damage to your wrist. Like essentially when you have a glide cam system, you're really only supporting it with one hand. So this is you holding up the entire glide cam with this hand right here. And then this hand right here is essentially you just guiding the glide cam in terms of like direction or where you want to go to. So when you're using this for a couple shots or over a long period of time, it's really gonna do damage to your wrist. And this is where like those, uh, those little wrist mechanisms are gonna come in handy. They work a little bit, but all in all, you might want to pick up a vest system for the glide cam just to be able to use it over a long period of time, depending on what field of work that you're in. As for the Zion Crane, the Crane has some positives going forward, but I think the Crane also has a gift and a curse with it as well. So the negatives of the Crane, and I think that this is a gift and a curse in a few different instances and ways that I'm going to touch on, but the weight of the Crane. So the Crane is very lightweight, which could be very good if you're doing like travel video making or if you were a vlogger, like I vlog on my Crane sometimes and it's pretty cool and I like that a lot, the fact that uh, the weight there is just not that heavy. But if you have ever used the gimbal or if you are a gimbal user, you know that gimbals get a lot of bounce. And this is gonna happen with pretty much any gimbal because they don't have that axis there to stop the bounce. And with the Crane being so lightweight, you're gonna get a lot of bounce from it most of the time, depending on how you walk or how experienced you are with it. As I said, this is a gift and a curse depending on what particular field of work that you're in. If you do travel work, this is gonna be amazing for you. You're gonna need something that's lightweight. You're gonna to wanna to pick the lightest possible system that's gonna provide the smoothest possible shots, the easiest. So this is gonna be perfect for you. My field of work is music videos. I like my shots smooth, steady. And I just don't personally like the bounce of my shots. So this isn't the ideal system for me. And I know that the Crane does provide that one setup with the handlebars if you do want to purchase it. But as is, the Crane is like a no-go for me in the music video field anyways. Another big negative about the Crane is its weight capacity. So if you have a bigger system, uh, say like you have, you're using a Sony a6300 like me, and you want to use an adapter or a speed booster, and you want to use Canon lenses or other lenses from different brands that aren't native, the system may potentially be too heavy for you to use. A lot of my favorite lenses that I love to use, I just can't personally use them on the crane because the weight capacity just isn't there. So if you're one of the people like me, or even if you have like a bigger Canon system, like a 5D Mark IV, a 6D, a 5D Mark III, and you're using it with a lot of these heavier L-series lenses, it's just not gonna personally work for you in terms of the weight capacity. Other than that though, the crane is very smooth. I think the motors really work really well and it's really good at keeping that horizon straight. It also has roll features if you're into that type of stuff, and it's lightweight. So the crane, it sits in a weird space for me. I like it a lot, but for my professional field of work, 
would I choose it? Probably not. As for the Ronin, the Ronin sits in my primary space in terms of the stabilizer that I personally use for music videos, but the Ronin is very, very, very heavy. So depending on the system that you're putting on top of the Ronin and the monitor that you're using and whatever other attachments that you want to put onto the Ronin, it can get very heavy really quick. So if you're into travel filmmaking or if you do documentary work, uh, this might not be the thing that you want to take with you. And another negative to it is that you always have to take a stand with you. It's no way for you to sit the Ronin down without that stand. So whenever you're using it, if you're moving, you're going to have to take the stand. So essentially, it's a two-part system in a sense. Another negative thing about the Ronin that I think is a negative, and it's going to be subjective on me anyways, and I think this is going to pertain to the crane as well, is I personally think that gimbals have a very mechanical look to them. And I know you're not going to really understand what I'm saying unless you use one. If I don't know, if you compare Ronin footage to typical glide cam footage to even steady cam footage, you can just tell out of the box which it comes from a gimbal most of the time. I don't know, gimbals just provide a very mechanical look. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it kind of is. I prefer the very smooth, fluid motion, uh, but sometimes you can get a very mechanical look from the gimbals. They provide like micro shakes and micro vibrations, like sometimes when you step with them. I don't know, I'll try to put up a clip right here. Um, over top of me talking to show what I'm talking about. But every now and then the Ronin will kind of sort of trip out on you and even the uh, the crane as well. They just provide like some micro vibrations in the footage and it's nothing that a little bit of electronic stabilization in post can't fix. It's just not as smooth as the glide cam and the steady cam and stuff like that. Now a few things that the Ronin does have going for it is me personally, I love the weight of it. As I said, when you're using a gimbal, you're gonna need something that has a little bit of weight on it and the Ronin just provides enough weight for me as to where I can operate it and not have a lot of different bounces in my shots and stuff like that. So I personally love the weight that the Ronin provides. Another thing that the Ronin has going for it and the Crane also has going for it as well and other gimbal systems is the convenience aspect of it. So with the gimbals like the Ronin and the Crane, as I said, they're really good at fixing your mistakes. When you're using a gimbal, like you don't really have to focus on guiding it that much. The horizon stays as still as you want it to be because the motors are gonna fix whatever like kinks and bumps and stuff that you personally do. So in the convenience aspect, I feel like the Ronin sits uh, way above something like a glide cam in most instances. I also love the form factor and the way of operating it. As I said, when you're using a glide cam, it's gonna do a lot of damage on your wrist, but the handlebar setup on the Ronin allows you to you know, basically use both of your hands to support it. And it also feels like a lot lighter of a system, even though it might potentially be heavy with everything on it. The fact that you can use both arms to support it, uh, it just feels a lot better to me personally while I'm using it. Not to mention the fact that you can attach a monitor to it with ease, a follow focus, if that's something that you're into as well. I don't, the, I don't, the Ronin just sits in a much more convenient space for me in terms of using a stabilizer on set when I'm doing a music video. And this is all gonna depend on the type of budget that you have to purchase a stabilizer in the field of work that you're in. Uh, if you're doing filmmaking, if you're doing travel filmmaking, if you're doing music videos, if you're doing documentary work, if you're doing short films, this is all gonna vary. I just threw out a bunch of different positives that I personally think about these systems and a few negatives that are evident with them as well. A lot of people always ask me all the time, what do I think the, the crane versus the Ronin? And, Honestly, they sit in different spaces for me. As I said, I don't personally like using the crane and I wouldn't use it for music videos just because it's so lightweight. I just prefer to use a Ronin. The ease is there to attach a monitor um, and it's just a bit more heavier. I don't like to have a lot of bounce in my shots. So they just sit in different spaces for me. I like to use the crane when I'm out traveling and if I didn't have a crane, I feel like a glide cam would be a good alternative to that. But you can even use a glide cam and get amazing professional shots on music video sets as well to replace a Ronin. And it all depends on what you're into. Like my co-director, uh, my homie creative Ryan uses a glide cam primarily for all of his video shoots. So I, it, it depends, man. It depends. But for me personally, just the ease of use, the ease of being able to attach a monitor, the ease of operation. I love the Ronin, man. That's just my go-to thing. I love it. So out of all three of these stabilizers, for my personal professional work use, I'm going to pick a Ronin every time. Even though I love the way the glide cam looks, even though I love the movement, the fluidity, the realism that the glide cam provides, the Ronin is going to beat it out for me every time because it's just so easy to use. I hope this video helped you all come to a decision on the particular stabilizer that you want. Out of these three stabilizers, let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite and also give me a reason why because I'm interested to know. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Drop this video a like if you enjoyed it. Peace out, guys.